my raptor spread on the outside where I want them. Before we stand them up, I want to talk real quick. This is that nailer I was talking about for the gable studs. Uh, it, this raptor is going to go right here. I typically, all I do, you could calculate the length of these. What I typically do is just eyeball the end so it's away from the ridge there. Nail it, come down here, just drop cut saw when I see that it's clear of uh, the seat cut there. Come in here and put our outside one on. You'll see I have this what's called a sway stick. What I do is uh, it, it'll line everything up with the outside of the house. It'll also help us as we're stacking. So get them face to face. Then we put in a piece that's the thickness of the ridge. Just line them up here. Uh, then we come rest down in there. And I'll just, I usually come from the inside. But I'm just going to do this real quick there. And I'm going to stick another little nail right here. So I can get a little bit on my uh, plate. Hold, hold me up there for a second. So I get everything going. Down here on this end, I got a ceiling joist. So I'm just going to go get this guy right tight over there. You can also shoot one in here. Help me stand this end. This ceiling joist I put in here is we're going to do a hip on this end and eventually, and that'll kind of give some structural strength down here for a, a mock up. I'd raise this ridge up. Got my layout marks. I'll tell you what, Ron, you want to just grab that in there? Raise it up for me, right in between. I'm going to kit a nail in this guy, right where the outside is. Now I'll let that go. I'll come back straighten that. What you gotta do? Just don't even pound. Never pound. Just open the two up. Because you'll typically just pound out the bird's mouths when you're trying to level them out. So watch your hands. Oops. Double fire. Okay. Next thing we need to do is brace brace the ridge and brace it vertically. We can use a little brace. I pre-cut the top of this so all I've got to do is mark the bottom and cut it. It should slide right in there. And then uh, Also cut a little tiny rake on that. I figured I, I knew what the uh, what it was. Seven and twelve coming down. And we're going to be plumb that guy up with a little torpedo level top or go that way, or we could uh, just tape measure and and come up with a dimension for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put one nail in here. The other thing we need to do, like I was talking, if we're vertically bracing this, there's a bearing wall in the middle. We're going to put one every six foot. And otherwise, if we've got ceiling joist ties, we don't need to worry about bracing the ridge because we're forming a little tiny triangle. As you push down on this, it's trying to pull out on the, that ceiling joist. And what's important in that case is the connection between the rafter and the ceiling joist has the proper, proper nails. A sway brace would be uh, cut at a 45 on the bottom. Generally it's clipped a little bit and uh, I'm just going to shoot it right in here down here. That should be good. 
them right over here. Check it. Check for plum on the outside, but I believe we'll be fine there. and talk about running these. The next thing after it's braced uh, would be to come and do your gable studs before you do all the rest of your fill. Important thing to note, remember about when you're using toenails, whether it be for toenailing the bottom of your rafter or you're toenailing anything else, is that these toenails should come out the center of that board. Too many times They'll, as you can see, this one was shot uh, incorrectly and it, that bad angle, it sh shouldn't be at a 45, which a lot of people do. You should come out the middle of that board. So, which means you're up about an inch, an inch and a quarter or something like that with about a good, maybe that's a 30 degrees uh, angle for that nail. Here we are after we finished running our common raptors. I'm, this side we're not doing any common rafters because we're going to have a valley come in there so we just left them off right now. You can, what I want to go over real quick right now is what is proper nailing. Uh, a lot of people like to end nail up uh, their, their uh, which is fine. I'm not having nothing against that but add a couple uh, a couple toenails as well in from the sides. It's pretty hard wood so this gun is uh, having a hard time sometimes. If we put a, I like to put two on one side, one on the other, up at the ridge, keep it from pulling apart. And then down here at the bird's mouth, should be two on one side and uh, one on the other. If you got a ceiling joist, of course, so we're just, you're just going to get two on one side, and then you'll get your nailing the joist into the, the wrap. Uh, notice that this ridge is run long. Uh, it could go out a lot farther, depending on... You know, you'd want to just run wild right now. If you know, if you have an overhang, big hole, overhang course, it'll go past that, and it can be cut when you're cutting in your outriggers and fascia and that kind of stuff. If you uh, are lapping every four foot with a ceiling joist, don't need to worry about too much. We already talked about bracing and stuff, but I did fail to mention that when you don't have a uh, ceiling joist and you're using braces down to a bearing wall, it would be good every every four uh, foot put a strap over the top from rafter to rafter, and that that should be put on after plywood. That'll keep those guys from uh, pulling out because really you have nothing keeping those walls from spreading if if uh, you're using a, a vertical bracing as your support. Roll or some of the questions that were brought up that we just worked on. Uh, putting up our gable roof outside. Uh, the first one was is on the 16 and 24 layout, uh, I didn't understand why I pulled right off of the corner and went 16 and go uh, versus uh, 16 center, meaning 15 and a quarter and uh, go. This would be 15 and a quarter, so your center would be at 16. Reason being is if you put your outside rafter right at the outside of the wall and you put one at 16 inch and go, you'll know that center to center is 16. I'm not starting plywood right there. We actually have three quarters available so that if you're going to run starter board out, you have three quarters of an inch in which to nail that starter board. So that's why typically with grab and go 16 and go, 16 and back. Ceiling joists don't matter at all. But if you go 15 and a quarter now, and you were to run your one right on the edge of the board, well, where would that be? It'd be right there. If you, so you have to come in here and cut this guy three quarters of an inch so you can have something to uh, nail that starter board on if you're going to run it that way. Uh, second question was sway bracing uh, when when, when you pull that sway brace off. Okay, uh, the sway brace, if you'll remember, uh, had a little bit of problem with it because it's, uh, I didn't have anything to nail to, but it's typically nailed to a wall and nailed to the bottom plate. Sometimes if it's a real tall wall, you can toenail it into this stud 
if you put your vertical brace in, put your sway braces on the whole building. Uh, so you got your skeleton. You want to get your skeleton up, then you go back, get rid of this, and run your run your gable studs before you would run any interior rafters. A uh, question also brought up: What happens? Uh, how to use your sway stick when you have a shear panel on the outside? I simply just put the, the sway stick up against your shear panel. Here, this is my outside wall. Okay, and we're tacked to that. Uh, we're tacked to the shear panel. This is shear panel right here. I just take a little time to use the shear panel and tack it up top with some aids. So now you'll be flush there, so that when you stand that those first rafters up, and this is your helper, it'll get the right height.